We can speculate, we can guess, but the fact is nobody knows. No matter how authoritative the critical drinker is, he doesn't know. And we definitely know he doesn't know because he's stating things that are outright provably wrong. Now there's gonna be a whole bunch of people in the comments of this video trying to claim that you know somehow he knows more or somehow there's a track record of this when there isn't. There isn't a track record of this. The MCU is literally, as it's been building its universe, building something new that no other movie studio has ever done. There is no previous record of any events like this happening. But the critical drinker and his fans will act like he knows something when he doesn't. And that's the truth. That's one of the elements why toxic fandom is so frustrating. It is really a key element of toxic fandom. It's an overabundance of confidence with a complete lack of knowledge. Hello, doing something brand new with this series. Gonna see if I can get some more of these episodes out to you a lot faster. Since the whole goal of this is to essentially provide you guys with a more nuanced and thoughtful take on a lot of media, and then also give you pretty much the grifter take, um, I was thinking this could be a much faster way to, to present that to you. Enjoy, and make sure to like and subscribe, because the algorithm stuff is just so important on YouTube. I cannot stress it enough. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to talk about San Diego Comic uh, Con? Because oh, yes, let's, they, let's, uh, let's dive into some yep. news from old San Diego. Yeah, so I like pretty much why I know is the Avengers news. I, I like I heard there's like a Doctor Who spinoff series happening, which uh, I don't know. Like I, I saw the cast list. I don't know anything about it, but the cast list is like really good actors. I'm like, OK, yeah, I saw I, that and I, I, I didn't yeah. recognize any of the names immediately, but I, I meant to read more about it. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, they they casted Doctor Doom, guys. Finally, yeah. So so the big reveal happened. Doctor Doom will be played by Tommy Wiseau. I know it. I fucking knew it. It's about it's, time. It's, yes, Avengers Rooms Day will be out uh, uh, May twenty twenty six. That's beautiful. I was not expecting that. I mean, it, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a bold move. I know. It's a I know. Tommy Wiseau to play Doctor Doom. That is just. Yes. That's going to be remarkable. It's going to be amazing. Um, oh, it's so going to be great. memorable, no matter what you say. Don't worry about it, man. Right. Don't touch me, motherfucker. Get out. Yeah, let me. I actually have a clip. Of the actual reveal. Hold on. <laughs> you might be shocked. That wasn't the actual reveal. I don't know, man. It came from Tommy's page. That's true. It it has the blue check. It must be official. I mean, would Tommy ever exacerbate or lie or mislead anything? Never. Ever. Ever. No. For the three people who haven't seen this reveal yet. Not not unsurprising that the room blew up. Um, so yes, no. Robert Downey Jr. will be playing Doctor Doom, returning to the MCU. Um, I know I've heard lots of people kind of negative on this. I am actually pretty positive on this. Um, I'll go over my like theories real fast um, because there's only two possibilities why they why Robert Downey Jr. came back to play Doctor Doom. Either they had a, a, a story idea, and I imagine it'd be a story idea around Tony Stark, alternate u universe Tony Stark, and this would be a variant that becomes Doctor Doom, which... Like Ultimate Iron Man? It's, yeah, I mean, there's there's different yeah, well, variants, that's, but yeah. it's, it's like the what if Ultimate Iron, Iron Man, yeah. where it's like what he ruined with Doctor Doom as opposed... Or he he ruined with Victor as opposed to Reed rooming with Victor. Um, I, and... I don't remember. I know. I actually do know in the current uh, Ultimate series that just started this year, uh, it's actually Reed Richards who's Iron Man. Or not Reed Richards. Yeah, it's Reed Richards who's Doctor Doom. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, there's, there's lots of different possibilities. Um, I think they either, the two most prominent ones are either 
they had a really great story idea. They're like, fuck it. This is a really good idea for Dr. Doom. Let's go ahead and bring on Rob Downey Jr. We'll just pay him whatever and just bring him in. Um, and Robert Downey Jr. always gives a great performance. So if they have a really good script and he does and he's there, I'm I'm think that's exciting. Or the other possibility is that he is just gonna play Victor Von Doom and he just really, really, really wanted the role. In which case, that's exciting too. Um I don't know which it is, but like those are the only two possibilities why he would come back and do this. And they both are encouraging to me. So like um, I know lots of people are saying this is desperate or something, and I I kind of don't get it. I mean, have they seen the 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 number one movie right now? <laughs> um, the the one that's crushing all box office records. Are you ready? Fuck yeah, I'm ready. It's Kevin um, Costner's big big hit. Yeah, yeah. Horizon two finally yeah, came out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um yeah. Um like um you know, and people keep on saying, you know, it's like this wave, you know, a project comes out, oh Marvel's dead, a project comes out, oh Marvel's back. It just goes back and forth and back and forth. And it's like um Marvel's not dead, guys. It just isn't. Um it's still around. Um, yes, the Marvel's bombed. Um but you know, uh, you have Multiverse of Madness was a big hit. Um, uh, no Way Home was a big hit. Guardians of the Galaxy three was a big hit, and now we got Deadpool and Wolverine, big hit. Um, they still have lots of hits. They still are a major presence in the box office. Um, they are far from dead. Um, and one thing I also think is interesting is all the people complain about the multiversal stuff, and like the three most prominent multiversal movies, I are the ones I just mentioned. It's Doctor Strange 2, uh, No Way Home, and Deadpool and Wolverine. And those ones are the two, some of the biggest box office smashes they've had since Well, then, yeah, so. and they're they're also doing that trope well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. honestly, like, I'm excited. Bobby, um, do you, what are your thoughts on this? What, uh, Downey playing it? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm okay with that. I mean, I... I yeah. I couldn't pick a better kit pit person to play Downey without revisiting another. Well, I don't know. Maybe Gary Oldman. Oh uh, well, I mean maybe. Gary Oldman can do anything. But I know he's lots too of old. Said, like yeah, Matt yeah. Mickelson. There, there are lots of good casting, but that's why it leads me to thinking it's one of the two possibilities of either they have a really good story idea where, with an alternate Tony Stark turning evil. Or Robert Downey Jr. just really fucking wanted to do it. And frankly, it's a, if it's one of those two, I'm a hundred percent game. I'm excited. Well, but but well, why I bring that up is, did you happen to see who introduced him? I, I no, I did not. I assumed it was Feige. Did someone else introduce him? The Russo brothers. Oh yes. Well, the Russo brothers are are directing the next two Avengers movies, which is also what, where a lot of my trust lies with them. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. I mean, I, the Cap series, which were the ones that they wrote. Uh, well, they wrote the well. The last they, two. they directed the last two, and then they directed yeah. the last two Avengers. Yeah, Stephen yeah, McFeely, who co-wrote the Captain America movies and the last two Avengers movies, is coming back to write the two uh, two new Avengers movies. Yeah, like so. they, they got the creative team behind it. Yeah, so it's. It, I have a feeling it's going to be good. Yeah. No, but I just I I'm going to wait and let it let it unthread. Do we have any comments about? rdj coming back were we going to talk about that at all or well we just got I, one and we can talk about it yeah i mean i've done a stream about it i did a video where i talked briefly about it the other I, day i guess what, what are your guys takes on it because i i'm kind of excited to see what it is um i have a couple different theories and I, like honestly i don't see a bad scenario to this but i am interested yeah go ahead go ahead my, my oh, take so, is just that oh where, was me go ahead or you go ahead who's going ahead that I go ahead, Dane. Yes, okay. I've talked a lot. Okay, so uh, I don't know. We don't know enough, right? Like that's mm -hmm. the thing. It, it there's different possibilities that could come that they could be have in mind with this, and that and there's some that that are potentially good, and some that just seem like they're not gonna be good, like to me. But I mean, nonetheless, uh, I mean, Movie Bob said it kind of perfectly in his video on the thing. Is like we just don't know enough to have a, a firm like negative reaction or positive reaction, but like 
you know, you can have a sense of uh, what you think it's going to be. And that's one thing, but like anybody that's just like, this is going to be bad and terrible, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's, there's enough to warrant that. That's my take. Well, in, in my, in my brain, I've come up with two possibilities, how this ended up happening. Either they had a fantastic idea for like an alternate universe where it's a Tony Stark variant that becomes Dr. Doom. And they, they, they're so, they think this is so strong. That they're like, we'll pay RDJ. We'll bring them back. Cause this is so awesome. In which case I'm excited for it. Or Robert Downey Jr. Just loves Dr. Doom and really, really wanted to play him. And they're just like, fuck it. Sure. Either way. I think it sounds good to me. <laughs> so it, it's, um, I mean, like even this one, I don't love RDJ's Doom. We don't know what Doom he's going to be. Because yeah, we are we talking about the multiverse here. Yet. So it could be I mean, a version that makes a whole lot of sense. I don't know. A thing um, I would like it, to ask, ask people is, uh, can, can you guys point out a bad Robert Downey Jr. performance in his career? Uh, no. Don't think so. So I see a lot of the arguments about Robert Downey Jr. specifically because of the ethnic heritage of the character. Yeah. Of, of Victor Von Doom. Is anybody in any, do we, like, how do we feel about that? Because I can tell you right now for me, I did a deep dive into like actors from that particular background that possibly could have played Dr. Doom. And it's a, it's problematic because it's Hollywood and we know that Hollywood doesn't always have the most, mm -hmm. um, the most welcoming space for like, you know, when it comes, we talk about diversity in boxes, but you'll be surprised how many people are not represented in Hollywood. But yeah, I looked up like people from a Romani heritage and there's very few actors that could play the role that would be big enough for Disney to consider. And you might say, well, they could cast an unknown. And I said this in my stream, there was no planet mm -hmm. in the multiverse where they would have gone with an unknown actor for Dr. Doom. That was not well, going to happen. Right. No I would what. say that's a possibility, except of what's got what happened. Because this was obviously uh, this was obviously supposed to be Kang. They yeah. obviously had to rewrite it for Doom. I think and they were planning to, on writing to make a Doom move into like it. that. You kind of need somebody big. <laughs> so I think that Doom was always going to be in Secret Wars. I think that Doom was going to kind of even if things would have gone the way that they planned, it probably would have been either Doom and Kang teaming up to a degree, or Doom just takes Kang out at the end of the Kang Dynasty or whatever to kind of set up the, oh my god, the guy that just took out the, the, the big bad that we've been dealing with mm. kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I, Secret Wars, you gotta have Doom. No matter which one yeah, you're Secret adapting. Wars, I, think I, I do feel he was gonna be involved in some way in Secret Wars, for sure. And yeah. speaking of which, somebody just said, uh, you know, wonder what he looks like. Uh, I can show you. You're not gonna like it. That's what Doom looks like under the mask. This is mm -hmm. from Secret Wars 2015. You know, that's uh, the, the other the, thing I, I was... I, I brought that up on stream. Like, it's largely going to be a vocal performance for him. Because he's... he's yeah, you know, he I, I believe that he might not even not be... He might not even be in a lot of the scenes as Dr. Yeah. Doom. It, it might be what I was a, thinking, another person like, in the suit or whatever. You know what I mean? It could be a Mandalorian type thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but like at the same time, I I would want to see his gestures. I suppose you know that'd be good mm -hmm. to know that it's a Downey gesturing as well, not just speaking. But at the same time, Doom is not short, and Robert Downey Jr. kind of is. He's yeah. not How he's not super he? short, but he's not tall. I, I think this that. might be a Thanos situation. To be completely five eight honest. five nine. Yeah, like they might like bump oh, wow. bump him up in in VFX to make him bigger. Um. I don't know. I, like, I want to be excited about it, and I think a lot of people are excited about it. Um, you know what I think the thing is, is they fumbled not that, they just, they they didn't, they didn't give enough context, so they fumbled the execution of the reveal. They wanted the the, the payoff of the, oh, we need a big win, and you know, in the public size kind of thing. They wanted one of those, having uh, Loki come out at Comic-Con kind of moments, where it's just, everybody's just fucking, you know, over the moon about it, and they didn't really give us enough to, I don't know, I think they shot their load a little yeah. too early. So there's a couple things I think that happened with the situation that are pretty obvious to me. Um, they went with Doomsday instead of Kang Dynasty because of the, you know, obvious reasons why. Yeah. Um, the other thing is they might have considered someone slightly less popular for Doom had the Jonathan Major stuff not happened because yeah. they mm -hmm. probably were like, we have Jonathan Majors, we can go with like someone at a mid-range actor and kind of elevate them 
between the two characters and that would have been fine as well. I think that left the, the room as soon as they got rid of Jonathan Majors, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, they want a guaranteed yeah. multi-billion dollar movie. And look, I'm not defending what they did. I think that they probably should have gone with someone else, to be completely honest. But like I said in my video, financially speaking, this almost guarantees that those two movies will be massive hits for them. Yeah. It just, I, it, that's I, just the reality of it. I do feel like it is also overshadowing the fact that like the Russo brothers are coming back to direct it. We got Stephen McFeely coming back to write it. Um, Which, this is the same team that did the last two Captain America movies. Same team did the last two Avengers movies. They did the first Captain America movie too, or the the writers did anyway. Uh, well, yeah, too. the writer did the first Captain America movie as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean that that and that makes a lot of sense to me because I didn't understand the whole like when, whenever they were like, oh, we're going with different directors from the Russo. I'm like, why would you do that? What, mm -hmm. I mean, they want to do it. They've been saying they want to do it. They know the Secret Wars. Like it seems just like a no brainer. But thankfully, we got we got there eventually. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I think they maybe as, uh, just wanted to uh, see somebody else, but honestly, the, if the Russos want to do it, and they've done a great job so far, let them do it. Yeah, I mean, Russos, Robert Downey Jr., I mean, essentially, this is what a lot of the Chud channels have been asking for. They wanted them to go back to this old, like, group and whatnot. Most likely, Chris Evans will be back. Most likely, we'll see a lot yeah. of the characters return that we haven't seen in, in a few years. Um, because that's what that's what Doom World is. I don't want to spoil anything from the comics, but you're going to see if you don't like multiverse and variants now, wait until Doom World, which yeah. I'm sure we're going to yeah. get. You're going to be, however, really however, angry. at the same time, to that point, the uh, it's actually called Battle World and not to be a actually guy, but it is it's called Battle World and it's actually the uh, that's what's left after the multiverse is essentially destroyed, though. So mm -hmm. we're actually going to be presumably we've already got the mention of incursions, uh, in at least Doctor Strange, maybe something else. Um, so the incursions are, are the, the universe is collapsing and like destroying like two at a time they're being destroyed, uh, until eventually this, the, the main Marvel universe, the 616, which they oddly call it in the MCU, which doesn't make any yeah. sense to me, whatever. Um, yeah. but that's supposed to be the final one. That's the center of the, of the multiverse. And, and when that goes, it's gone. Um, but like, yeah, is this true? Is it, are you just saying this or is this for speculation? Cause I mean, that could make some sense actually. If that that they were like, oh, we want Downey, and Downey's like, well, I want the Russos, you know, maybe <laughs> Russos do me right. Um, I mean, especially if Robert Downey Jr. was willing to do it for a bit less money for if the Russos came aboard. Well, didn't I mean, he get paid like 80 million? Four footage. Sorry, isn't he getting paid like 80 million? Something like that, yeah, it's a ridiculous. No, damn, yeah. I mean, Holy sure, shit. good on him. <laughs> I saw that he's already made something like six to eight hundred million on the MCU. Like he's almost been a, become a billionaire from the MCU. That's fucking crazy. You know? Um, yeah. Sorry, my internet keeps lagging on Streamyard. I'm he's probably to... the he, yeah. He's got to be the highest paid actor right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, almost certainly, almost certainly. Well, I mean, yeah, and she's right. They need to listen to her. Um, somebody said uh, Javier Bardem or Dan Stevens. I love Dan Stevens, but I, I don't see him as Doom. I see Bardem as a pretty good Doom. That... Oh, I thought Dan Stevens was brilliant as Legion. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he's great. And like, have you ever seen the movie? Uh, what the fuck is the name of that shit? Um, the. Uh, oh, you talking guest. about. Is it The Guest? Yeah, that must be. Guest. Yeah, that that is a good. He's That's creepy in that good movie. movie. Shit. Yeah. It's just like a, it's like a Terminator, but with just like a regular dude. Yeah, just a dude who's creepy as fuck. <laughs> um, I don't like Doomsday as a title. I get that they wanted to have Doom in there because, like, to Eric said what he's saying, um, you know, they wanted to make sure that this is going to be a hit, right? So. It, they, they in, in that regard, they wanted to put Doom right there in the title. And what else are you going to call it other than, you know, Doomsday? I mean, it makes sense, except that I it makes me think of Doomsday from fucking DC Comics. I mean, I hope, but like, I mean, if you got to look at how they did him with Iron Man, it's like any moment that he was yeah. not literally fighting, he, his helmet was off in the MCU. Um, which 
you know, I get that that's better for, for uh, seeing an actor remote and stuff like that, but I don't know. Um, it's worth noting I for hope... Iron Man, any any shot where you don't see his face, Rob Downey Jr. is not there. <laughs> True. Also, uh, yeah, if they if they do any kind of thing where like, oh, this Doom wears his, doesn't wear a mask all the time, I, pe pe people are going to reject it. I'll probably reject it. Yeah, Doom kind of needs to wear the mask. You can get away with Iron Man, but Doom needs to wear a mask. <laughs> um, you know, that said, there is some, uh, I guess poetic uh you know sense in having him play another guy in an armor what did he mean by uh 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 what is it new mask same task what was the task he's talking about there save the mcu um some people were saying they think that he means like he created the mcu now he's going to destroy the mcu and rebuild it i think that's what that was about mm -hmm. oh okay because Iron Man was essentially the beginning. I mean, I know that there's arguments about which one actually sort of made it what it is, but he was kind of the beginning of that universe. So yeah, I, I think a very strong argument can be made for Iron Man. <laughs> my my issue is that I see a lot of names being dropped for who could have played Doom, but none of those are people of Romani um, background. So that's that's the whole thing is trying to find an actor to fill that spot. I don't know if they would have been able to do that. I mean, I'm sure they could if they would have really went looking for that specifically. But um, yeah. So the, the yeah, I mean, it does start to lead me to think that it's going to be a he's not physically present thing. Because yeah, I think he's just going to be the voice. I'm I'm, almost, I'm starting to get more confident of that the more I think about it. Maybe it'll be a motion capture thing, but yeah. I guess. I mean, I don't see why you have to do that, though. Like, you could just no. do a, a, you know, I mean, like a, a CG armor or whatever mask, sure, if you need to do that. But I mean, I, I always felt like Doctor Doom's armor was always clunky, but, like, it always kind of worked for him because he sold it just because he's such... Just... An incredible villain, frankly, just insanely powerful, way more powerful than he has any right to be. <laughs> so if anybody remembers, I did have a Doom mask at one time, um, and it was like mm -hmm. a legit metal fucking mask. Um, mm -hmm. That thing was hard to wear. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just saying Doom is not in, he's not comfortable <laughs> at any given time. I was going to say. If they're not bringing RDJ back for the impact that'll be on the characters from seeing that he is doom, then is it because they just want to put asses in seats? Because if you think about it, like, like within the world of, of the MCU, seeing doom pull off that mask and be a variant of Tony Stark would be extremely meaningful for the characters, like extremely yeah. meaningful. But yes. if that's not who he's playing and he is just Victor Von doom, and the characters aren't going to even notice that he looks the same as Tony Stark, then that would mean it is literally just to bring money in and there's no intrinsic value to I mean, the actual story. story. That's why because, I'm 90% yeah. sure it's got to be a variant of Tony Stark. So to the former, the uh, option of like, you know, they're, they're going to reveal and like, um, yeah, uh, imagine, especially if we're talking about uh, before we bring in all of the old school Avengers and assuming we've got the kind of new Avengers uh, that we're following at first, we're talking about the younger generation that definitely idolizes these older guys. And yeah. then to literally see the face of, you know, the hero uh, who fucking saved the world, sacrifice to save the world. Like, I don't know. I wonder if there would, then that makes me think, would there be some kind of like narrative thing, like the thematic thing about, um, you know the i don't know pushing aside old the old people so mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know to make new for make room for new i don't know so i want to well, point out Christian, that, that, they, that they've they've lied about stuff in the past so yeah i, I was just gonna say they, you yeah. know they've never lied about anything before right <laughs> i mean we just had harrison ford lie about red hulk like he lied mm -hmm. about red hulk before the trailer came out so remember how toby mcguire and andrew garfield definitely aren't in no way home right like why are you people yeah. talk about no <laughs> anything other than what we know which is that rdj is playing a version of dr doom yeah. any other statements made outside of that just completely go they they may or may not be true because that's just the way it is 
uh well the infamous iron man so that's that is just another version of tony stark that becomes i, I believe dr doom right it doesn't he go by dr doom is that the oh, no, story in, goes? infamous iron man i think that's actually the one where it was victor von doom and he becomes iron man right yeah he does he starts okay. to, it's so after uh, right. after secret wars uh which spoiler alert the, the face that you looked at earlier there um at the end of it happy ending for doom uh he finally it's fixed um I was thinking of, of the um, the world where uh, Tony Stark, it, as Iron Man, eventually becomes a, a, a antithesis to Reed Richards and starts going by Doctor Doom. Iron Man. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. there's also the Elseworld story that people keep talking about, where where Victor and Tony switch bodies or whatever. Which I don't know if they would do that. Um, that seems that might be too comic. I don't think they're doing demon in armor, and I uh, just don't feel like they are. But it was pretty funny that you kept saying, you know, uh, I don't know, Doom and Tony's body and Tony and Doom's body. I was just like, eh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just, um, Tony became, well, Tony became like a major dickhead uh, when he was the, uh, was it in, Superior Iron Man? Just before 2015 Secret Wars. Mm. Um yeah, you know, there's really no telling. Like, all I know is that, like, people, anybody that says that that, that it already sucks because it's not, it's clearly not going to be following the comics in some way. Oh go read God. the comics and shut up. Stop talking about movies. Yeah, you, you know? know what? The MCU has, you know, what what their MCU is good at is capturing the spirit of characters. But, like, as far as storylines, they kind of do whatever the fuck they want. They, there yeah. will be elements that, that they piecemeal out. But, like, yeah. Story yeah. accuracy is not a top priority. Mm. I mean, that would follow somewhat from, um, yeah. I mean, it could be something as simple as he's going around like in Secret Wars or pre-Secret Wars, where he 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 and Molecule Man were destroying multiverses or universes um, before they ended up destroying the Beyonders, and he took their power. Um, but in this example, he maybe just decided, "Hey, look, I'm going to take this Tony Stark guy's body." Could be as simple as that. I don't know. Also, um, if anybody here has read, I mean, we, I know we've read it, but if anybody in the chat's read it and remembers, like, it's going to be interesting to see how they do Doctor Strange in, uh, in the story because, uh, spoiler alert, in the comics, he's got a very close connection with Doom. So it's a, it's a nuanced role that he plays in it, right? Yeah. Like, I read it not too long ago, and I remember the first time I read it years ago. I was like that's weird that he's like just doing what doom says and he you know he's he's one of the only ones that remembers before but at the same time like then you, you know once i read the 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 lead up to that which i hadn't read until a few months ago where like him and doom are, are doing this stuff together and then at the last minute strange actually kind of chickens out yeah that was it yeah he talked about in the comic where there was a point where they were debating who should be the one in charge of everything and he's like i i uh, i basically i chickened out doom didn't you know right and, uh, and that that's yeah, that makes sense. But like, so I don't know. You know, uh, Strange. As soon as he realizes that the the other heroes are are actually there on Battle World, he starts giving him a hand. He starts undermining Doom, and then pretty pretty soon, you know. Um, did you did you happen to see the leaked teaser for Fantastic Four online? No. They dropped. They showed right. Galactus in it. So what? yeah, Damn. there was a shot of Galactus with the helmet and everything. And they confirm that Galactus is a multi, multi, multiversal being, meaning that he's the only one, like America Chavez is. Like, there's no other version of him. He's he is a singular being that can cross through the multiverse at will. So wow. he just he exists in all. It's the same person in all multiverses. So, hmm. so that's what brings them to. Okay. And that does kind of match uh, what happened in the Ultimate and Six One Six, the Ultimate Galactus, where he like actually crossed over during the incursions that caused that. Actually, um, yeah. the Six One Six Galactus crossed over into the Ultimate Universe, and then merged with the fucking Galactus Cloud thing. Um, it's kind of crazy. Um, also, Galactus it kind of becomes Doom's bitch in uh, in the Ooh. Secret Wars storyline. So that's gonna be yeah, that's right interesting true, um, true. not not i guess tangentially uh related but uh 
Uh, if anybody hasn't read that that Doom uh, one shot that came out not that too long ago, check it out. It's awesome. Oh yeah, the recent one that came out. Yeah, the the Jonathan Hickman one. Mm. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, just for like, I mean, it's it's actually it maybe more powerful. He becomes more powerful than potentially God Emperor Doom. It's hard to tell, but yeah, definitely no. maxes out. So obviously, there's a lot to be said about this reveal. The thing that really dominated the discussion of San Diego Comic-Con was absolutely the reveal of Robert Downey Jr. playing Dr. Doom. We don't know enough details. Is he a Tony Stark variant? Is he just going to be Victor Von Doom? We don't know. Um, my money is on Tony Stark variant, but we will see. Um, what are they going to do with him? Is it going to be live action? Is he going to be CGI? Is he just going to be wearing armor the whole time? There's so many questions. And frankly, we don't have the answers. We can dig through comic book storylines and get hints and clues, but the MCU has always been very willy-nilly with the storyline, so we don't know. Um, it's always impossible to tell, and we haven't seen the movie. We haven't seen any footage. Hell, it isn't even shot yet, so we have no idea what's going on. And that brings us to the grifter sphere, the, the, the anti-fans, the, the chuds. Um, what are they saying about this? Well, to look into this, we'll be looking at Critical Drinker. If you haven't heard of Critical Drinker, he is perhaps the most popular movie uh, reviewer on YouTube. He has over 2 million subs. And there are other movie YouTubers that have subs in that range. Not many, but there are others. But he is the only one that regularly gets over a million views on pretty much every single video, almost without fail. So calling him the most popular movie YouTuber isn't really a stretch. However, he definitely qualifies as a toxic fan. To his credit, unlike most of his cohorts, he will uh, also cover non-franchise stuff and give stuff good reviews occasionally. But that's not what we're going to be looking at today. We're, you know, his movie reviews, you know, some are good, some are bad. But what we're going to be looking at is his speculation video. What are his thoughts? on the Doctor Doom reveal. Pretty much you'll see a lot of, uh, pretty much his thoughts mirrored throughout the grifter sphere. A lot of people are gonna be saying this type of thing. So let's go ahead and break down Critical Drinker and his thoughts on this uh, Robert Downey Jr. reveal. Um, to summarize my thoughts really fast, um, Robert Downey Jr. was announced to be the new Doctor Doom. I'm assuming it's gonna be a Tony Stark variant. I know they're saying it's not, but like, they're paying, like, as far as I tell, they're paying him a fuck ton of money to come back. Um, there's no reason to bring him back, in my opinion, and pay him that much unless they had a really good story that involves Dr. Doom being a Tony Stark variant. So even though they say he's not, I don't believe them. Let's face it. Daphne Keene kept on saying on the interview circuits he wasn't in Deadpool and Wolverine. And then on the last trailer dropped, and I only feel that's a spoiler because the last trailer shows her. She's in it. Um... So, yeah, these these people will lie. I doc, he, He's got to be a Tony Stark variant. But it also came with the news that the Russo brothers were coming back, which, yeah, like there wasn't news of them coming back. But like they always said, they were down to come back. And then, yeah, now they are. Um, so, yeah. And then Stephen McFeely, who was the co-writer on the Captain America movies and last two Avengers movies, he's come back to write the, the next two Avengers movies. So, I mean, it's overall good news. But let's see what Critical Drinker thinks of, of all of this. Robert Downey Jr. returns epic win or cheap nostalgia bait. And that's something he does a lot. He does lots of both sides with his frigging um, titles. Ladies and gentlemen, as proof of the unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multi-universe, we give you the one person who could play. So, um, yeah, the throw up over the Marvel multiverse. Drinker, I thought you liked No Way Home. I know you, I'm sure you didn't like freaking uh, Doctor Strange 2 because all you chuds were against it for some reason. By the way, Doctor Strange 2 is totally fucking underrated. That's an awesome movie. Anyways, but yeah, I thought you liked No Way Home. I, I haven't looked up your review on Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm willing to bet you probably liked it because it's it's bringing in the money. Victor Von Doom. <sighs> oh 
Wow. So criticizing the fans for being excited for that and cheering. You know what? Here's the thing. If Will Jordan was actually in that audience, he won't have been yelling too. He would have been. He won't have been hyped up by the, the audience and just start uh, celebrating. But instead, he's going to criticize them for being excited to have a, a crew returning. I mean, it's pretty shitty, honestly. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Yeah, how dare they be fans of Marvel and celebrate the return of a beloved actor? What jerks? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. You all knew this was going to happen sooner or later. When your franchise is on the ropes, all your new characters, movies, and TV shows have failed, and you're all out of ideas on how to fix it. They're Okay, so franchise is on the ropes. This is this is literally like he's he's releasing us. So this is San Diego Comic Con. So this is after we already got opening weekend numbers for Deadpool and Wolverine. Smash hit, smash hit. This is not franchise on the ropes. Yes, they've had some duds in the past few years. They've also had some big hits. Some of the biggest post pandemic hits have been Marvel movies. It's it's it is what it is. But like. Saying that they're dying when they they have when they're just off one of their biggest hits ever, biggest R rated movie ever, the first Marvel movie, MCU movie, Marvel movie, Marvel Studios movie that is R rated, and it's already the biggest R rated movie ever. At least opening weekend, we'll see if it it beats Joker overall. But damn, damn, I I don't think it's a dying franchise, guys. I think I think they just gotta be more careful, but I think they're doing okay. <laughs> There's really only one thing left: the nuclear option. Bring back the most popular actors, writers, and directors of yesteryear with the promise of massive paychecks, in the hopes that it'll turn back time and revive the glory days. And so it was at San Diego Comic Con this weekend, the annual nerd event where Marvel are given the increasingly daunting task of drumming up some kind of enthusiasm from their wavering fan base by announcing another slew of boring. Did you not hear the cheer in that audience? That doesn't sound like a wavering fan base, bro. You, I know you're criticizing them, but that doesn't sound wavering at all. Like, bro, like if you're not excited for this, that's fine. But like, why are you acting like nobody cares? Um, obviously people care. Derivative cash grab spin-offs of stuff that's already been done far better. Tell me, are you excited for Discount Iron Man or Discount Captain America that's had the GD? Um, okay, so, okay, let's see what he says. P of a small South African country spent on it, or a blade. Okay, so, yes, there have been lots of shoots for that Captain America movie. And I do think it's interesting how these guys bring up budgets a lot, because, um, budgets, like, it, budget's an interesting thing to look at if the movie's bad. Like, if the movie's bad and you can break down the budget, but, like, before we've seen it, kind of, who cares? And if it's a huge budget, but, like, it turns out really good, who cares? Like, we get a good movie. And that's all we care about at the end. That's all I care about, getting a good movie. I know there's been lots of issues with Blade. Let's see. Movie that's been in development longer than most of us have been alive? Or I... Okay, well, that's definitely hyperbolic. Yes, Blade has been in development for a while, although people act like it's, like, extreme. Um, Ant-Man was in development longer. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Ant-Man was in development for seven years. Um, yeah, sounds right. Um, yeah, this hasn't been in development for that long. Yeah, and discount, yeah. You, you That is interesting. Discount Captain America. Sam Wilson's a pretty fucking cool Captain America. Come on. I get the Harkness. We can't stick with a title for more than two weeks. Anyway, I digress. I do think it's interesting how they've changed the title back of the series for a while. But, like, I mean, that series exists because she was a big hit on WandaVision. So, giving the fans what they want. Yes. The point here is that Marvel finally achieved their attention-grabbing objective when Robert Downey Jr. was paraded out on stage in full Doctor Doom outfit to make the announcement that he'd be returning to the MCU to play one of Marvel's most iconic villains in the next two Avengers movies. Because let's be honest, I don't think we're going to be seeing much of Kang from now on. <laughs> well, fun fact, Secret Wars, one of the big things Doctor Doom does in Secret Wars I've heard this. I haven't read it, but I've heard it. One of the big things he does is kill Kang. So I do suspect they'll probably do a Kang recast, or maybe they'll CGI him just to have Doom kill him so that we can move on.
Because, yeah, I mean, he's obviously the replacement for Kang. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we joked many times on Open Bar. Yeah, it was announced in 2019, so it's five years. I mean, it's... I mean, it is going through development, hell. But, like, pre... Pre... Uh, Pre-production on a movie can get rough. It can get rough. As long, as long as it turns out good in the end, I don't care. ...that we'd know for sure when Marvel had reached creative bedrock if they brought Robert Downey Jr. back as Tony Stark. And, well, here... That's a bit of a goalpost shift, though. Um... So, like, if they had brought him back as just mainline Iron Man from, from the MCU and just resurrected him from Endgame, okay, you got an argument. But if this is just a multiversal variant, then, like, we know these variants exist because they've been doing multiversal storylines for a while. So, it's, it's not the same thing, then... <laughs> Here we are, halfway there already. I say halfway because there's actually a storyline from the comics called Infamous Iron Man, where Doctor Doom took up the suit after Tony Stark fell into a coma. Hmm, I wonder if they might be building up to something like that here. I wonder if this whole thing was just a roundabout way of getting RDJ back into that good old Iron Man suit without admitting that they straight up retconned him back to life. And I can pretty much- well, I'm assuming it, like, we don't know the storyline, so we have to see. Like, he's he's guessing at best here. I would assume it's a multiversal variant. Um, some sort of variant to Doctor Doom, probably based on Tony Stark. Pretty much see how it's all going to play out. It's probably going to be a variation of that storyline. It's probably going to involve multiverses, because after five years of failure, Marvel are still clinging to the idea that they can make that concept work. And for- Five years of failure. What's your source? That's a failure, critical drinker. What is your source? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got, we got to break this down. I know DJ broke it down, but critical drinker just brought up. So now, now I have to break it down as well. All right. So these are the biggest movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So uh, number one, Avengers Endgame, of course, one of the biggest movies ever made. That is, um, like, you could argue like the multiverse isn't really a cornerstone of that but definitely is involved because we do get an alternate universe version of thanos and and gamora um you know i mean you could argue timeline stuff that's kind of just all universes are so that's definitely semi qualifies but uh, you know i'll give you a pass number two spider-man no way home i can't give you a pass on that one I absolutely can't. Spider-Man No Way Home was absolutely a multiverse story. abso fucking lootly Second biggest movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, domestically. No argument on that one. Um, so Black Panther, yeah, no. Uh, Avengers Infinity War, I'm going to put under the same thing as Endgame. Uh, let's see. Uh, Avengers, uh, Age of Ultron, uh, Wakanda Forever, Captain Marvel. Oh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Number nine. Almost a billion dollar movie. Very much a multiverse movie. Very fucking much. Uh, scroll a bit further here. Uh, uh, now it's probably not going to be very far up. Because, well, wait. They actually, do they even have it in here yet? They may not have it in here yet. Yeah, I don't think they have it in here yet. Hold on. Hold on. Because, what? what is the, the current movie? Yeah, prove that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was a multiverse movie. Oh, man, it got me. I can't do it. <laughs> All right, so... Deadpool and Wolverine cracking 200 million barrier this weekend on its opening weekend. Um, like, absolutely, like, destroying its numbers. Um, so, ah. So, it was uh, uh, projected to make just over 200 million uh, last weekend. It made uh, almost 300 million. Um, it is wrecking the box office right now. Biggest R-rated opening for a movie ever. Um, it is, has a very solid shot to take Joker's record. Very much a multiverse movie. So, Drinker, you can complain about multiverses all you want. What's your evidence that it's actually fucking failing? 
Because as far as I can tell, multiverses are making Marvel lots of fucking money. It's allowing them to bring back characters like t- the, the or, uh, actors like Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Hugh Jackman into the MCU movies. It's making so much money. For all I know, it's probably going to involve an alternate Tony Stark facing off against Doctor Doom so that we can get twice the Robert Downey Jr. action. And we... I guess it's possible, but, like, we we still have to see it. Maybe, you know, maybe they do that and they sell it. Maybe they do it and it sucks. That We still got to see it, dude. Like, essentially, all you're doing is projecting it's going to be bad, and we don't have evidence that it's going to be bad because we haven't fucking seen it yet. But also, um, all the evidence you've actually brought up has been bullshit so far. So, like, what? <laughs> we might as well throw in an alternate Thanos, too, because why the hell not? You mean an alternate Thanos, like in Endgame, one of the biggest movies ever. Not just MCU movies, one of the biggest movies ever involved in alternate Thanos. Let's get real, Drinker. Will they do involve an alternate Thanos? Maybe. Actually, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, that is one of the ways you establish your new villain. You have him take out some some heavies. Maybe he will maybe we will have Doom take out an alternate universe Thanos. That's a way to establish a villain. That's why Thanos takes out Hulk at the beginning of uh, Infinity War, to establish that he's a badass. Not right. He my, was... my point isn't necessarily that he's wrong. That he, the, my point is that like he's selling all this stuff like it's an inherent negative, and it's not. We gotta see how they deliver it. How do they do this? popular as well. The thing is, you're probably watching this video right now and thinking, Drinker, you wisecracking genius billionaire playboy philanthropist, how can you be so cynical about something so cool and unexpected? Easily, because I know exactly why this is happening. There's a reason Marvel parted company with most of the original Avengers after Endgame, and it had nothing to do with creativity and artistic integrity. Instead, it had absolutely everything to do with money. The more you bring back actors to play the same role, the more expensive they become. Well, here's the problem. Before Endgame, everybody was complaining about how nothing in Marvel is final. How, like, no character actually dies. I mean, it, it kind of made fun of a bit with, with Loki. Because Loki just kept on dying and just kept on coming back. Um, and, and so, with Endgame, we, we actually did kill off some characters. And now the complaint was, oh, now, now you're killing off characters. And it's like, there's no making you people happy, I swear to God. Um, it's a comic book universe. Weird shit happens. Characters die. Characters come back. It's fucking all over the place. As long as they're entertaining movies, I'm cool with it. That's all I want in the end. If there's a movie you don't like, don't watch it. It's not that tricky. Come over the years. They're yeah, getting no, old. And that's the thing to keep in mind. A lot of what he's saying is all an inflection. Like, it's not so much like what he's saying. Like, if he was reading a lot of this in a positive tone of voice, it would be like, oh, okay, so he's excited for this. But like, a lot of it is just like, oh, ugh. Older and less interested in doing effects heavy action scenes. They're worried about typecasting and wasting their prime years by spinning their wheels. They start getting bored and they want to take on new roles, and their agents start demanding more and more money for doing less work. All of this leads to a pretty dangerous combination. I don't know what it costs to have RDJ, Scarlett Johansson, Chris Hemsworth, and the rest of the gang together one last time for Endgame, but I'm willing to bet that it was a very significant chunk of the budget. Cunning. Um. Well, he's not wrong. It was not insignificant. That being said, a lot of their contracts um, were already included with that. Um, they did have to extend RDJs um, because they, they did a bit more movies with them than intended. Most of them had their contracts kind of lined up to end at that point, though. Um, but, I mean, were they a decent chunk of the budget? Yeah. Um, big name actors are like that, and they've always been like that. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, who isn't a fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies in the 80s? His paycheck was a decent chunk of the budget, let's be real. Bring out these aging and expensive actors and bringing together a younger, newer, and cheaper cast for the next big event movie made perfect sense from a business point of view. Yes, but you guys complained, you know, because a lot of the newer cast was diverse because you guys are offended by that. And it's, I'm not gonna lie, from my perspective, I was like, fucking about time. I'm tired. Like, let's face it. 
Um, the original Avengers being one woman and five white guys was a bit much. That's a bit much, right? We, we can diversify that a bit more. It feels weird. Like, even in the even in 2012, I was like, I love these characters. I think they did a great job with them. It feels fucking weird that it's like five white dudes. Most of the Avengers are just white dudes. Um, what? <laughs> the only problem is that nobody liked what they tried to replace them with, which is why so many post end Okay, so he's showing a scene from Loki, and their narrative has always been that Selvi was a replacement for Loki, which she wasn't at all. Loki was very much about Loki. Selvi was an alternate universe variant of Loki, who is a major character in that series. But she's not Loki. Loki is very much the main character, no matter what these chuds say. So it's weird to use that example because it's an example that really doesn't apply whatsoever to what even you're talking about. Endgame projects absolutely flopped and why there was very little. Okay, so like endgame projects that flopped. Like, okay, Marvels. I'll give you Marvels. Ant-Man the Wasp, maybe? Maybe? Like, I don't know. It's probably, like, well, after home video, it'll probably do fine, but like, Maybe Ant Man the Wasp Quantum Mania. Um, that's like it, right? As far as actual flops, as far as the TV series, we have no idea. We have no fucking idea about the TV series. Disney doesn't release streaming numbers, so that's pure guesswork. The fact that you guys covered them so much means they must have done all right. So at most, we're dealing with two possible flops for Marvel. And the, the thing to keep in mind, Ant Man and Wasp Quantum Mania. Even if it didn't quite make his money back, it had to come close. So, like, that's not huge. Um, you know, fucking No Way Home will more than make up for that. Fucking Deadpool and Wolverine will more than make up for that. Um, Marvels? Marvels didn't do great. And it's also worth noting, everything I just brought up, when it came to streaming, became a huge hit. Yeah, Multiverse of Madness did great. Uh, Wakanda Forever did great. Um... Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did great. Deadpool and Wolverine's doing great. There's plenty of successes. Uh, Eternals didn't do great. Um, Shang-Chi did all right. Um, And then Black Widow, we actually can't tell. So Black Widow, box office numbers weren't amazing. But again, what was special about Black Widow from everything else? Black Widow, when it released, did a dual release. It did a release on theaters. And then it also did a release um, on Disney Plus. $30, and you get Black Widow streaming to your home day of release. Now, what type of numbers did it bring in? We don't know. We don't know. But I do know. I know quite a few friends who watched Black Widow that way. So it wasn't nothing. We don't know. So even if the box office was a little bit lower... It, it 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 made a lot of money through that through that premiere service it did, so who knows? Who knows? Little interest in the next Avengers movie. They'd failed to set up any compelling characters or storylines to feed into it. The thing is, the whole um compelling characters or storylines to feed into it. So like we've already brought up how the multiverse stuff has like already done pretty well. Um, as far as setting up storylines, um, well, obviously, like you argue, Kang's the only setup they've done, and obviously that's not going great with Jonathan Majors. But that's about um, it. And honestly, going into Infinity War, like they didn't do that much with Thanos either. They've actually done a lot more with Kang uh, than they have with Thanos, and that might be to a bit of a detriment with Jonathan Majors not being around anymore. But we'll see how they handle that. Now, that being said, um, don't have any cool new characters. I think Yelena, the the new Black Widow, is pretty cool. Kate Bishop's pretty cool. Um, Who else? Um, I mean, we haven't seen a whole lot of the new characters, which is part of the problem. Um, We still have Doctor Strange around, and that's awesome. We still have, we have a, I wasn't thrilled with Shuri Black Panther, I'll be honest. Um, Who else we got? We, We got a new Guardians of the Galaxy team. They'll probably pop up at some point. Um, yeah, Kamala Khan. We got Miss Marvel. She's awesome. Who doesn't like Miss Marvel? We still got Captain Marvel. Um, yeah, we got plenty of cool characters. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I say the issue with the newer characters is that we really haven't seen too much of them. We haven't. And we'll see. Like, they still have to get developed. The whole point of Avengers films is that they act like a giant sandbox where all your favourite toys from different places can come crashing together in wild and wacky ways. It's fun because you get to watch characters that have never interacted with each other before trading quips and matching their skills and wits against each other. You get to see the culmination of big storylines and character arcs that you've been following for years. But like I say, it all hinges. I mean, partially, but it's kind of simplifying it because it also has to do it well. like. Just throwing a whole bunch of characters at a movie, um, if you look at a lot of the Fox movies, that's that's that can be a failure. Fucking X-Men Last Stand, let's pile the characters in. Fucking X-Men Origins Wolverine, let's pile characters in. Just, uh, just piling characters in is not guaranteed success. You still have to do a good job directing it and writing it on the build-up, and if there's one thing that phases 4 and 5 of the MCU have failed spectacularly at, it's creating any kind of build-up for the next Avengers movie. Fuck. Well, we still got a little bit of time till the next Avengers movie. Um, that being said, yeah, they, they have some really successful movies in the multiverse. So yeah, I mean, if you want to argue they could do more to build up the new Avengers movie, I guess, but like, what, we're, we're just under two years out? It feels like they still have time to build up towards it. It, it feels like you're asking. I, I'm not even sure what you're asking for. You're asking for. Huge Avengers build up. Everybody knows the Avengers movies coming up. I don't know what. What would you like drinker? What would you like to get you excited? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Fuck me, the narrative is so fragmented and littered with the corpses of aborted ideas at this point that I'd struggle to even tell you what the main storyline is. Now don't- There isn't really a main storyline. Um, it's, um, there, I mean, obviously it's involving the multiverse, but like, what was the main storyline of Infinity War before Infinity War started? What, there's a whole bunch of Infinity Stones floating around and Thanos exists? I mean, if you're a comic book fan, you kind of knew what was going in. And it's the same thing here with Kang. If you're a comic book fan, you kind of know what's going on. But, like, if you're a movie-going audience, you're just going from movie to movie seeing what's up. You don't know the details, Drinker. Um, it feels weird to to just be like, to act like we knew everything going into Infinity War. We didn't. We barely knew anything. And now it's kind of a similar situation going into Doomsday now. Don't get me wrong, it's not been all bad news for Marvel lately. Deadpool and Wolverine is shaping up to be the kind of big, crowd-pleasing summer movie that they desperately need at this point. But just like Guardians 3, they can't really exploit it because it was more of a swan song to a different era than the dawn of a new one. Something- Oh, it was- guys, it doesn't count because it was a swan song to a different era. You gonna ignore the fact that it's a fucking multiverse movie, bro? It's a massive multiverse movie. How? What the hell? What the hell? M nobody cares about multiverses. By the way, here's Deadpool and Wolverine. It's a multiverse movie, but I'm definitely not going to bring that up. Jesus, dude. Like, talk about cherry picking what you're going to talk about. Shit. And tells me you won't be seeing Deadpool as the centerpiece of a new Avengers team anytime soon. Captain America. Cool. Oh. This is when he talks about the Captain America Brave New World trailer, which was fucking awesome. If you haven't seen the Brave New World trailer, check it out. It is such a cool trailer. Like, yeah, so apparently they've had issues with free shoots and stuff like that, but fuck, that trailer looks fucking good. Holy shit. Four has been blighted by a nightmarish production, endless reshoots, and a budget so ridiculously huge that the film has got almost no chance of breaking even, never mind making a profit. Meanwhile, everyone... Oh, but you, don't you want to talk about how awesome the trailer was? That trailer was awesome. I hope it's a good movie. I kind of don't like listen at like when it comes to budgets, that's something Disney has to worry about. They're a multi-million dollar corporation. I don't care how much money they spend on that movie. I just want a good movie. And that movie looks good. Uh, uh, William Hurt, um, Hedgehog Nerd, William Hurt. Awesome actor, but yeah, Harrison Ford's a good recast as well. One's geared up to roundly ignore Agatha Harkness in droves. All of this is to say that bring Agatha Harkness, that series only exists because the fans found the character incredibly, uh, they liked the character. The fans really liked that character. 
That's why that series exists. Um, so saying that like the fans don't care seems weird because that's the only reason the they're, the series exists because the fans do like that character and want to see more of that character. Come on, man. Bringing Robert Downey Jr. back into the MCU it feels like a move born out of necessity rather than desire. A desperate decision by a company that knows its franchise is in trouble, and the only way forward now is to look backwards to more successful times. I'm okay. Um, this is like pure like guesswork on his part. Um, we don't know. Although, like, frankly, I I feel like the the like he could propose that's because the Marvels flopped, but like obviously Deadpool and Wolverine's doing great, so I don't think that's a big issue. Um, I think Robert Downey Jr. being recast, frankly, might have more to do with the Jonathan Major situation. You know, they have to bring in, like, they either flat out recast Kang, which, I mean, they could do, or they could just bring in a new villain, which, okay, we can do that, too. Um, and Doom is the logical villain for Secret War, so it's logical to bring him in. Um, and then, uh, and then once, once you have to replace your main villain, you kind of need to bring in a heavy gun to do that. Robert Downey Jr. as an alternate universe, Tony Stark. That'll do it. That'll fucking do it. <laughs> I mean, maybe the simple fact that they're actually aware of the problem now and doing something to address it is some kind of progress. It's a public admission that what they've- The problem? You haven't even established what the problem is, Drinker. So, Ant-Man and the Wasp 3 underperformed. The Marvels flopped. Okay. Is that, like, is that the problem? Like, what's the problem you're proposing, Drinker? I'm, I'm kind of confused. Um, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> They've been doing recently isn't working, yeah, and a change of course. was success as well, so what, what is the problem? Forces desperately needed. Up until the Marvels landed on us, it was still possible for them to stick their fingers in their ears, ignore the growing fan criticisms, and blame their declining box office returns on other factors. But declining box office returns. Um, biggest R-rated movie ever just opened. It's a Marvel movie. What is your argument? Um, like, like, here's the deal. We'll have to see how the numbers have, uh, play out. But I know Disney was essentially saying they felt the issue was oversaturation. They're doing too much MCU on the, on the, on, on TV, on Disney Plus, and then too much MCU in the movies. So they're scaling back the movies and the series. And now that we've started seeing that enacted, we, we get in our movie and it's a huge smash. So we'll have to see how it plays out, but... That seems far more likely to be their issue than anything you're talking about or implying, Drinker. Like, like, uh, it, like you're saying all the new characters, and I can't help but think about how all the new characters happen to largely be women and minorities. Um, can't help but notice that. After that calamity, there was just no hiding it anymore. Something had to give. And you know what? Did it? Like, obviously, like, I think some assessment is necessary after the Marvels flop. Um, I think partially because the Marvels, let's face it, it's not an amazing movie. Um, I know I know there are people who like it, and I think I don't hate it. I think it's it's got some fun to it. I think the three characters have a great dynamic. I think the villain is extremely lackluster. I think there's some jokes they could have um, um, definitely pursued a bit better. It's not perfect, but I don't know. It's it's fine. Um, I'm. I think someone, I think an argument could be made that the Marvels feels very much like a skippable movie because it very much did. It felt like extra. It's, it is what it is. But like the Marvels felt skippable watching it. Um, um, it was advertised almost to feel skippable, like nothing significant really happened in it. I don't know. It's just, eh. and it's despite having good characters. It had good characters, but there was just nothing really to grab you with it, and I think that hurt it more than anything else. 
I hope it works out for them. I really do. Because any studio that recognizes their mistakes and makes a gen- Okay, I'm just gonna be blunt here. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Um, the, he needs to grift on Marvel. Hell, par, probably part of the reason he's releasing this video and shitting on this is because Deadpool and Wolverine just came out and smash it. He, you know, he has to be careful not to shit on that too much. But shitting on the Marvel, shitting on Star Wars, shitting on stuff, that's where he makes his money. So he has to, you know, he, he's, he can release this around the same time as Deadpool and Wolverine do probably a positive review on that. I don't know. I haven't seen it. But th then he can also shit on Marvel. So no, he doesn't hope it's successful. He hopes, well... You know, a degree of success is fine, but like he 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 needs stuff to grift on. He needs to grift on Marvel and Star Wars. Genuine effort to fix them deserves some kind of recognition for it. But let's be real here, there's a big difference between bringing back one popular actor for some quick and easy fan service and making a sincere attempt to put right the many problems they've created for themselves. Explain the many problems they've created for themselves. Please explain it. You've implied a lot, but you haven't explained a single goddamn thing. And a couple of the facts you've brought up have been flat out wrong, bro. So explain something. I know you've got 10 seconds left in this video. You're probably just going to say, go away now. But I would love it if you explained some of the shit you said. Because you've explained nothing. You're just throwing shit out there at this point. Oops. Only time will tell if this is the former or the latter. Anyway... That's all I've got for today. Go away now. Ah, uh, critical drinker. I love how he mostly just says shit, but doesn't bother to bring up any facts or anything. Like, the only fact he had on there was that Marvel's flopped. And that's the only fact he brought up where it's like, okay, I gotcha. I know, Marvel's flopped. Okay. But like, oh, they're bringing back Robert Downey Jr. because they're desperate. I don't know what I don't know how desperate they are. And then being like, oh, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine's only successful because it's 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 from a bygone era. It's a multiverse movie. You spent this whole thing shitting on multiverse movies, ignoring the fact that the multiverse movies are some of Marvel's biggest fucking hits. That's the critical drinker for you. Just just saying shit. I swear to God. So you can probably see a difference in the coverage when it comes to this reveal. It's interesting. I think it's kind of cool. I'm kind of excited for it, but there's a whole bunch of different takes you can take. Should they have gone with a Romani actor? I think that's an interesting question. Who could they have chosen? When it comes to casting Dr. Doom, one of the things you have to consider is that this is also a semi-Kang recast. So you need somebody big, especially considering you build a lot towards Kang and Jonathan Majors isn't there anymore. How do you handle that? There's lots of moving pieces, and we're not going to know the full context until the movie is actually out. And that's something toxic fans simply can't oblige. They can't sit and wait for the movie to come out. You'll notice with the Critical Drinker's coverage, there's a lot of asserting stuff, acting like certain things are facts, are known, that he's gleaned some sort of hidden information that he simply hasn't. He has no idea because he knows as much as we do. All we know is that Robert Downey Jr. is playing Doctor Doom in an MCU movie. That is literally it. We can speculate, we can guess, but the fact is nobody knows. No matter how authoritative the critical drinker is, he doesn't know. And we definitely know he doesn't know because he's stating things that are outright provably wrong. Now there's gonna be a whole bunch of people in the comments of this video trying to claim that you know somehow he knows more or somehow there's a track record of this when there isn't. There isn't a track record of this. The MCU is literally, as it's been building its universe, building something new that no other movie studio has ever done. There is no previous record of any events like this happening. But the critical drinker and his fans will act like he knows something when he doesn't. And that's the truth. That's one of the elements why toxic fandom is so frustrating. It is really a key element of toxic fandom. It's an overabundance of confidence with a complete lack of knowledge. Now, I hope you enjoyed uh, this. Now, I hope you enjoyed this variation on the video type I've been doing. Um, I, as you could definitely tell, I could definitely get this out a lot faster than the other versions. Um, and I'd like to continue making stuff like this. Uh, to help me out, please, uh, I have a patron. 
I have memberships. You can see on my uh, live streams, the live streams where I've clipped this are now uh, members only. But if you're a member for a dollar a month, you can see those live streams right now. Um, all that stuff helps me a lot. And if you're not willing to pay anything, that's fantastic too, because you know what else helps me? Hitting like on this video, hitting subscribe, hitting that bell icon for new notifications, and, and doing the same for other great channels. I'll have suggestions for you at the end. And spoiler alert, at the end, after the credits, there'll be a little like bonus video for you guys, so enjoy. Here's some great channels that could use your love. Organized Chaos Podcast, Actual Fandom, Turf Nation, Eric's Reloaded, Eric Debunks, Pop Counterculture, Forced Adversity Podcast, Mr. Tardis, Pillar of Garbage, Bob of the Old Ways, Nothing But Media, Blurred Without Fear, Blurry Films, Chariot, Edgier Than Thou, My Two Cents of Nonsense, Bobby Quarters, and many, many more. You know, the very powerful and the very stupid have one thing in common. They don't alter their views to fit the facts. They alter the facts to fit the views. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. And that leads us to our last book. This was the one you guys voted for. And then, yes, we will get to Trump. But uh, this one barely won Doom. The Doom one shot. And I got this cover because this was the only one at the comic shop available. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of variants, so I just got the, the Galactus cover. I was like, uh, I wonder why Galactus is on a cover. Uh, sometimes the variant covers don't mean anything. But this one does. So anyways, living on borrowed time, the clock ticks faster. And then we just see Dooms floating in space with a whole bunch of debris. We've found him. He's looking good, by the way. His vitals, however, are almost undetectable, well below survivability thresholds. His armor also appears to be fused, completely inoperable, incapable of life support or stasis. And looking at the, the heat signatures, it's conclusive. Doom has been like this a very long time. How is he still alive, Valeria? It's magic, dummy. Bring him aboard. He's stable and he's going to need a lot of work. Just look at what to, he did to you. Oh, Uncle, look at you. Look at what he did to you. Ah, missing stuff. Days of Doom. Sanford Green and Jonathan Hickman, art, plot, and script. And then Herbie. We need to find a place where he can recover, nurse him back to health, while we come up with a plan, what to do next. Shi'ar space is closest and would, ha would have been perfect, but obviously that's not an option now. Maybe I think I might have a solution for, for Valeria. It must have drifted from the area where they fought, um, but the head of the armor uh, appears intact. Okay, vital's good. Uh, completely stable, you know. So, so they're 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 getting Doom back up. Then here's here's Doom here. Valeria, welcome back to the land of the short of the short lived, Uncle. What what happened? And then we see apparently he fought Galactus in a giant suit. Then she just says, "You lost." Herbie has access to memory core of your of your great Doom Titan and replayed the battle between you and Galactus. I've checked and double-checked all of the calculations. Under normal circumstances, you should have been able to hold your own. But what you didn't know was exactly how relentless the World Eater's pilgrimage had been. You assumed, and you were foolish to act so quickly. And your father and the others, they were foolish to wait. Yep, Hickman's, yeah, Hick, Hickman did Ultimate Spider-Man yesterday, now he's doing, he did this one as well. You assume the universal constant like Galactus would remain constant. That billions of years of consistent behavior would continue without change. Then you were uh, di dissuaded of, those, of that notion. He broke your machine and then he broke you. 
after that Galactus continued forward. I understand uh, the why the mistake was made. Galactus is nothing if not an exercise in energy conservation. He moves slowly through the universe, coveting his energy, controlling his appetite. We have never seen this universe and have never witnessed the world eater both rampant and ravenous, but that is what defines him now. Equilibrium be damned. He has surrendered to the madness, to the hunger. After you, he did not stop. He raced from plant to plant, devouring all. Words f fell. Sli societies collapsed. Whole civilizations were erased. And as he ate world after world after world, um, until he came to ours. When you and father first discovered what Galactus had been doing and where his, his, his eventual path led, you decided to act. But father decided to do what he always does. He attempted to solve the problem. So we got Hulk, we got Captain America, Iron Man, Reed Richards, uh, Professor X, Daredevil, uh, Miss Marvel, uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Hulk. So he gathered all of Earth, Earth's hero. He get, gathered all of Earth's villains. He strategized, he planned, he solved for everything. He, an army was assembled. They stood in the gap, faced the great enemy. And Galactus destroyed them all. And you get quite a few. Hey, it looks like there's, we got Blade there, Electra, Hercules, uh, Moon Knight, it looks like. Uh, Modoc, um, She Hulk, Jubilee. I don't recognize him. If you guys recognize some of these, I don't, let me know. Uh, it looks like we got Juggernaut. Um, there's Wonder Man there. Thor, Howard the Duck, um, Captain Britain. Man Thing, Cable, Silver Samurai, um, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage. Sure, that makes sense. Um, yeah, Galactus destroyed all of them. All the superheroes are gone, guys. He left our planet and husk, an empty shell, a dead world where nothing would live again. That was two years ago, and I've been looking for you ever since. Err. And how did you survive, Valeria, when all else perished? Oh, you know me, Uncle. I was never seduced by the short-term satisfaction of victory. I've always been more interested in survival, just like you. No, Valeria, doom does not survive. Doom endures. And we are all alone, all that's left. Did no one else stand in the world's uh, world eater's way? They did. After Earth, the Guardians of the Universe assembled and met Galactus just outside the Council's space. Uh, but they all fared no better than the defenders of Earth. So yes, of all the living things that measure their lives by normal means, we only we remain. Then I will need armor. You'll need more than that. Your ordinary armor won't do, but I think I have a solution. Problem is that your human biology can't support what I've built. You'll need to become something more. I've grafted the, the blood of a celestial onto human plasma. The super soldier Serum Herbie gave you earlier should keep it from killing you while your body synthesizes it. As for your armor, it's a composite of ure and vibranium, one, of the, one for strength and durability, the other to serve as your conduit for the three cosmic cubes um, that power both you and the suit. What do you think, Uncle? Doom is pleased. Well, building an amazing thing runs in the family. But uh, I won't be too happy until you hear the rest. Ah, I see now. At the time of your father, I would not understand Galactus's motives. But you, you figured it out first, didn't you? Two days ago, I watched a, a spiral. Ooh, wow, this is really zoomed in. Uh, a, a galaxy broken nebula. It was so insignificant, just background noise, a brilliant nothing compared to the silhouette of what unfolded before it. Yeah, so it's Galactus and a whole bunch of slash shields. And I watched it a few light years away. Galactus overflowing with power and hundreds of devoured planets going to war of celestial gods. The heavens shook as the eater of worlds fought the judges of them. It was terrifying. Many gods have fallen in that in the time that we have known each other. Uncle Decide is something we have both seen. 
but I swear the killing of an entire pantheon is the sight best left for the blind. Who would do such a thing? Who could do such a thing? Look if you dare, uncle. The answer is Galactus. So he's wiped out Celestials now. Not much of the... He's just tearing through the universe, man. <laughs> um, but as your question, why is he doing this thing is, no, I still haven't figured it out. Ah, Valeria, it's right there in front of you. The Celestial's machine? You know what an ultimate nullifier is. You've held one in your hands. This is just its monstrous mother. It's nameless entropic nightmare. A universe killer and a universe creator. The death of one so that many, so it may rep be replaced by another. Galactus, it seems, is tired of waiting for his role to witness the end of the of one universe and the start of the new one to be born from its destruction. He's going to replace everything? Yes. And we have to stop him? We certainly must try. But we know this. He will have new heralds, as he always does, to watch his back as he feeds his machine from his many feedings. Can he destroy everything without the machine? Unlikely, but but nothing. I'll try to destroy the machine. You handle the mo molecule, man. Then we'll see what's left to deal with the madness of Galactus. I hope you've recovered enough. I hope you're strong enough. Strong enough? At my weakest, I'm strong enough to face any foe, even should it mean my end. Dr. Doom is always very humble and, and, you know, thoughtful dude. What follows are the final words of Doom for most. Everything ends in regret. And such regret often leads to a particular question. How did it come to this? Where did things go wrong? Could it have been prevented? And most of all, how did we not see this coming? Some argue that the right person at the right time could have prevented what happened. I know the folly of thinking. When the end comes around, there are, will always be desperate cries of what if. As a tyrant, as a despot, as a ruler of men, I have heard all the questions and damned, and the damned do surely ask. Because they think that civilization could have been saved, that the empire of man could have been man maintained, but they do not understand the nature of the universe, the finite, the infinite finite, the endless end. They pray for a miracle. And why would and why would they not? I performed no small number of them, and they are praying for someone to hold up something that is already collapsing all around them. A god came to Earth and judged it. Galactus judged the Earth and every other planet that exists, and he found that we were not worth saving. So they pray someone save us, but one cannot save was already lost. So I beg you. Take a moment and think about all those things that are gone. But more than that, what we still have to lose. Valeria, Valeria, can you hear me? Yes, Uncle, I'm approaching the machine. Herbie, is there any chance we can disarm the thing and better yet break it forever? No, not once it's active. And it certainly is that. I guess that decides it. I'm going in. Loop yourself into the mainframe. As much power as there is running through the thing, and we should... Uh, it should be several conduits spill over. Will you check? There are five such conduits. There are five such conduits, Galeria. Can we close them off? Yes, but uh, if we do that, yeah, I know. Give me access. Uncle Doom? Yes, Valeria. I want you to know something. You're always good to me. You protected me, looked after me. And I want you to know I loved you for it. Beep. Because one day, sure enough, that too will be taken from you. So we get a burst, and Valeria is gone. Then you will look back on the moments you lived, judging yourself on whether or not you did so adequately. This is not nihilism. It is certainty. We know it is in our bones. This day will come. Life ends for us all, so accept it with head held high, refusing to be judged by what gods remain in the universe and unscarred by whatever sins lie in your past. And all that remains is one final moment of defiance. Embrace Doom and laugh in its face. So, final confrontation between Galactus and Doom. And that's the end of the book. Fucking wild book. I will say I thought the beginning was much better than the end. I thought the beginning had like a really great like setup. And then towards the end it was almost just like, okay, we gotta do stuff to get them fighting now. 
and the the action wasn't super thrilling i think i think that's part of why the it worked in the beginning cuz you, you like you're like it's lots of implied action with the the all the heroes fighting him but we aren't seeing too much and it just looks cool and then when it gets to actual action it's a little bit eh. um that being said all that being said those criticisms fucking uh, loved this book and we got some art here the art here is very solid the the story is very solid um yeah, it's a five-star book. I loved it. Fantastic. Check out the Doom One Shop if you get a sh chance. New mask. Same task. What did I tell you? I like playing complicated characters. Love you. Love you. Wow. <laughs> 